Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, good people? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building again for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And normally, this is the time where I would say I'm with my dog, big dog, only dog, Nate dog, but he is not with me today. He is on his way to Miss to Miss, what Colorado to go see his boy Deion Sanders. Well, you know, he, he, I, I like Deion Sanders, you know, but you know, Dion's rocking with Colorado now, and I'm a Washington boy, and you know, we're in the Pac-12 conference today. So I like him because he's Nate's boy, but you know, he's kind of, you know, kind of my rival now. So uh, safe travels for Big Nate, dog. We know how he likes to travel around in his uh, in his van, going around the country. But it is officially March, and because it's officially March, that means it is Women's History Month. So I looked at it. I'm always looking at opportunities. I'm like, you know what? Nate's gone. It's March. It's a great opportunity for me to bring in some special guests. And my special guests today are none other but my own, very own two minions out of my three minions, but my two daughters, Nadia and Sky. What's up, people? Hi. What's up? So go ahead and introduce yourself. What's your name? My name's Sky. Mm-hmm. What's your whole name, though? I need your whole name. My name's Sky Rain Stanback. Ooh, okay. And my name is Nadia Renee Stanback. Ooh, okay. So you guys got the, the RSs going. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. So um, it is Women's History Month. Did you guys know that your dad did the show? Yes. yes. You did? I, I did. Who do I do the show with? Mr. Nate. Nate. Mr. Nate. Yes. Mr. Nate. Awesome. All right. Cool. So it is Women's History Month. You guys came, uh, were my tag along today. You guys hopped in my backpack. Okay. Like little Dora. <laughs> backpack, backpack. Okay. So now you guys are here. Um, but. For those that are out there listening, okay, people can see us, people can hear us, uh, depending on how they listen to it. What does Women's History Month mean to you? It means that my all the women in the world can be really nice. Okay, they can be really nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And, and, and tell everybody how old you are, Scott. My, I'm eight. You're, You're eight. Old. Okay, when's your birthday? March twenty seventh. Okay, Nadia, how old are you? I am 10, about to be 11. Did you just forget how old you were? <laughs> you, you looked up. I like, thought I was 11 for a minute. Did somebody hand you a card with the answer of no. your brain? <laughs> Why did you look it up? All right. So you're 10, about to be 11. On what day? March 21st. So you guys' birthdays are six days apart. Yes. yes. So you guys just wanted to cost your, your, your daddy and your mom a lot of money, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty sure it's your mom's fault. All right, so Sky, so you think that all women have an opportunity to be nice, right? That's what it means mm-hmm. to you. Okay, cool. Nadia, what about you? What does Women's History Month mean to you? Women's History Month to me means it's when we honor all the great women in our history. Okay. And we honor all the things that women have done that men could also do and that men could like whenever men told women that they could not do it, and then women proved them lo- wrong. Nice, nice. I like it. Now, there's been a lot of things in history where women were not allowed the same rights as men, right? So, how do you guys feel about? And obviously, you guys are not living in those times, okay? Things right. have changed. You guys are in a. There's been a lot of women who have come before you who have done some amazing things, been bold yes. and courageous, right? Um, been very selfless, and now because of them. Right now, you all have opportunities that they did not have. Okay, so how do you think it would have made you feel if you grew up back then and you weren't allowed to vote or you weren't allowed to have certain jobs? How would that have made you feel, Scott? It would made me really mad. Okay. And it would have made you really mad? Why? Because if they didn't allow a woman to do that, that would be really mean. And, like, women do good things and, yeah. like... 
if they wouldn't allow women to do that, then the whole the world would be a bad place. I agree. I agree. Okay. Nadia, how about you? How would that have made you feel? I would have been very upset because it, like, we're pretty much all the same. Okay. But different in our own ways. So it would have made me really upset and mad because if boys could do it, why couldn't women do it? Like, what's the difference, really? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I don't know if you guys know this, but your vice president of the United States is a woman. How does that make you feel? Really good. Yeah. I'm excited because um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the vice president can turn into the president. So if Miss Kamala, Miss Kamala Harris, right, mm-hmm. if she turns into the president, she would be the first woman to be the president of the United States of America. Absolutely, absolutely. What about you, Scotty? Does that, does that make you feel good that she's the vice president of the United States? Yes. Just a woman in general. And yes. And she is, I'm happy if she gets president because she'll make good rights. Yeah, okay, I hope so. I hope so. Okay, so women weren't allowed to do a lot of things, right? Even in sports. Really? Right? Wow. Yeah, even in sports. Even in the, Schools, there's a thing called Title IX. And Title IX was, uh, was something that was passed a long time ago, which gave women this, uh, not all the way equal, but gave women a lot more rights than guys do when it comes to sports. Yeah. Um, in and and opportunities in um, in athletics, so I thought that was pretty cool because you know it allowed for women to have soccer teams, allowed for them to be able to have basketball teams, Track and like teams. So they wouldn't just allow all the guys to have all the sports and all the opportunities and women not to, right? And it carried right. on beyond just sports as well. But um, that's kind of one of the, one of the things that it, that it started with. So. I was happy because there's a lot of I know a lot of women that were in sports and I know a lot of really good athletes and I want to see them be able to compete, too. Right. And I agree with you. I don't think that it's fair that the men get to do things and the women don't, because like you said, we're all pretty much the same except for our gender. So um, I'm glad that people before us came and passed along those bills, those changes in law, which gave women more opportunities. What um, what are some women? Give me one woman in your life or somebody that you don't even know that you admire? Let's, let's start with you, Sky. I admire... You forgot her name? That's okay. <laughs> we'll give Nadia a chance. Nadia, who's somebody that you admire that is a woman? My mom. Your mom? Yes. What's her name? Natalie Stanback. Mm-hmm. I admire her because she does a lot. And yeah. I mean a lot. She works two jobs while taking care of us, while taking care of our dogs. She she gets what she needs to do done while taking care of us and um, letting us get, what's it called? Letting us do what we want, not exactly what we want, mm-hmm. but like yeah. if our needs, like gotcha. she takes care of us. I remember you. Oh, you remember? Okay, all right. Let's let Nadia finish, guys. Don't forget it. Um... Yeah, I just love her because she does so much for us and for other people, and she's so nice, too. I agree. She's a pretty cool lady. She's pretty cool. What about you, Sky? Who do you admire or hold in high regard that is a woman? I I admire your mom because she took care of you really good. My mom? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. She's really nice. She had three children, just like you had us. Okay. And... She's worked really, really hard, really, really hard to make you pass on all of the things that you pass on to us. That's pretty awesome. That's a great answer. Thank you very much. I think she'll she'll like to hear that answer. Both of them. My my was it my mom and your mom. All right. So that's pretty cool. Um, I know for me growing up, I, I would have to say my mom too, Scott. I would have to say my mom, and I definitely admire both of you guys' mom. Um, Natalie, I think she to you to you guys' point, they're both pretty amazing women, um, as well as your other grandma, uh, yes. your, your mother's mom. She she does amazing things as well. But it's I think it's how important is representation. We talk about represent. We've talked about representation before on this show. I um, mean, and, and usually it was in the form of um, 
of your ethnic descent. So being an African American or being uh, you know Asian American, or, you know whatever it might be, right? And, and having that cultural appropriation and, and recognition. How important is it for you all to see women doing things that you guys want to do? And what does that what does that mean for you? Because if people don't really feel I don't think that people understand how important representation is. So how important is it for you to see somebody doing something that you want to do, but they're a woman? You tell me first, guy. What you got? It makes me feel really good because women are really smart mm -hmm. and they do good things. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Do you, um, Nadia, what about you? It makes the re It makes me feel happy because, like, just in general, um, it's gotten better, but some some people are like, you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that. Or like in track, somebody will tell, a man will tell a girl, you're not fast enough, mm -hmm. and then they beat the man's record <laughs> and even more. So it just makes me happy. That's funny, there is a story, short story, but I had one of my teammates Okay, I'm not going to say his name, but I'm not going to put him on blast right now. But he was one of my teammates in college, and he was one of those guys that's, like, really confident. Yeah. Like, overly confident. Like, sometimes, like, he shouldn't even talk because he's really not that great <laughs> at something. But he's still going to say that he's really good at it. And you ever heard an analogy, put your foot in, and put your foot in your mouth? Yes. Okay, so he was a guy who often would put his foot in his mouth. Okay, so he's told me at one point in time that he was really fast. You guys know your daddy's pretty fast, okay? Yes. When my hamstrings work. Um, <laughs> okay? When my hamstrings work, I'm fast. But this guy thought that he was fast, too. So he came on the track team. I, I went out for track my first time. I think I was a junior in college. And we went out on the track team. And we were starting practice. And then we started getting ready to start competing and running races against other teams. And this dude was just talking about, oh, I'm the fastest here, blase, blase. And we're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Here he goes. <laughs> well, we had one of the girls on the, women, on the girls track team uh -huh. who was really fast. And she was really good at what she did. She ran the hurdles, the 100 meter Ooh. hurdles. And she told him pretty much to be quiet at one point because <laughs> she was like, I I'm faster than you. <laughs> And he was, and he, of course, he made a big show. Oh, oh, you're not faster than me. Blase, blase, blase. Right. right. Made a big scene. And then they were just, you guys ran the 60 meters before. Okay. Okay. We were running indoor track. It was a right. 60 meter race. Well, he ran his, he didn't win the race, but he ran his time. Well, she ran against the girls, of course. And whose time was faster? Hers. Her time was faster. <laughs> so everybody did. Everybody he threw a fit. Or oh, something. he lost it. <laughs> he definitely put his foot in his mouth. He lost it. We we talked bad about him. We clowned him so bad. And then guess what he did? He quit track. <laughs> but for me, it was awesome because I'm like, here is a great example of probably what a lot of women used to go through. Right? right? Somebody, a man telling them that they can't do something or they're, they're not, not good as good enough, as, yeah. as something. And then she just put her money where her mouth was <laughs> and he put his foot where his mouth was <laughs> right so i remember feeling good in that moment not only because you know he he embarrassed himself but also from the <laughs> standpoint of that was an empowering moment and that's something that that one moment even as funny as it was sticks out to me because she's a very strong person not only physically but mentally um and spiritually she's a very strong person and i loved seeing her put him in his in his place and knowing that n there's a whole lot of non-funny situations that took place a long time ago that a lot of women had to have that same courage so i thought that was pretty awesome some um even at like my school recess like this is my last year of recess recess sadly so i'm trying to do as much activities and play games as i can while my friend group like likes to sit down mm -hmm. and talk so i'm one of the only girls that really plays so we sometimes race and all the boys are like you're slow you shouldn't be racing mm. right now and stuff like that and then Turns out, next thing you know, I'm beating all of them. <laughs> the, can you tell the people how, what place did you finish last year in the state of Texas in the 100 meters? I finished third place. Good. All right. Why'd you say it like that? Like you got a frown because on your face. <laughs> I wanted to get a higher place, but I'm happy I still qualified for nationals and I'm happy I got a medal. There you go. And I did my best. So, and Sky, how about you? 
I'm happy because I won it. I got first place, Ooh. and I was really happy. Nice, nice, nice. So, as you guys are doing sports, all right, what is, what are some of the things you just talked about? Recess. Is there any, is there any occurrence or anything that's ever happened that really bothered you in terms of what we call sexism? Okay, where a guy tells you that you can't or a guy tells you that you're not good enough. Is there anything like that that's ever happened to you or even another another woman maybe? Yeah. Tell me what what, do you have a story, Sky? Yes. So this so you Me? (laughs) Uh You told me Oh I'm not strong. Oh, I that, did. That bothered me. Okay. So I said something back to you. Yes. And that made you angry. Oh, it did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I told you that we have to just get stronger. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> but it's okay. That's how you took it. So that's good to know that's how you took it. Right? But I was I was talking about we just need to get stronger. If we want to be the fastest in the nation, we have to get stronger. Right? right? So that's what I was talking about. But Nadia, give me, a, give me your story. Um... So whenever we're competing or something like in so- I play soccer and I and I play soccer and I run track and in track we would it's my favorite thing to race the boys cuz the boys are always talking about how they're the fastest relay team. So whenever we race the boys I'll be like, "Okay, come on guys, we have to <laughs> we have to win this." And then after we beat them, they have to do like we um our track coach lets us give them a punishment to do. Or in soccer, um, it's really fun whenever we play the boys because the boys are always talking about, like, some of the boys on the other soccer team go to my school and they're always talking about, we're going to beat you. And I'm like, you sure about that? And then we beat them, like, 5-0. to zero. Uh-huh. And then they have to do something with us after, like, practice or something, and they hate it, but we <laughs> always prove them wrong. Okay. All right. I want you guys to give me what you... How does it make you feel when you guys experience mean girls? Because we just talked about how guys mistreat women and have tried to hold women down in the past and girls. But what's not talked about a lot of times is girls, girls, what we call the crab pot mentality. Okay, the crab pot mentality is when you put crabs on a, in a in a, on a uh, boiling water, they try to do what? They're gonna try. They to, try to run. They try to they try to crawl out, right? Right. But sometimes there's another crab that's in there too, and what? They don't want that that crab to escape. So what do they do? They pull they them pull down. They pull down, right? So that's the we when we say crab pot mentality. There's a lot of people, women and men, right? right. That and culturally and religiously, and a whole bunch of other categories yep. that pull each other down. Instead of elevating the next person, right. they pull the other person down. And I know that I've seen it with you guys in, in school and in sports where people try to pull you down instead of elevate you. How does it make you feel when you have, if you have had other girls try to pull you down and make you feel bad or be mean to you? Okay. And made me feel really mad. And then, once when I was doing my two hundred, they called us the b- blueberries. And then I, <laughs> p- I cracked my neck and I said, "I'll show you." Ooh. And then I won the two hundred, and and then I got a gold medal. Why did they call you blueberries? Because uh, um, because because we looked because we had our color the oh, lightning blue. The blue got you. So that made you mad, and that made you want to do better. Mm -hmm. Okay? You wanted to prove them wrong. Yes. Okay. All right, Sky. All right. Good job, Sky. Nadia, you tell me. Give me Um, an example. Give me an example of of mean girls or something like that that really just bothers you. It bothers me whenever... I'm nice to them. Like, let's say on my soccer team. Okay. If there's a girl that's super mean to me, like, for what? And then she tries to beat me and everything, or then she'll tell me just the, like, I don't know. She'll just tell me something rude. Okay. And then I'm like, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or whenever girls try to act grown, like, be grown too fast. At our age, we're, like, 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there. And whenever they're acting grown, I'm just like, why? And then they think they're all that and stuff like that. And then whenever it gets to soccer or track, they tell 
like your teammate or something that yeah, they're not good enough for stuff. Yeah. And in soccer, that bothers me because this one girl was like, my teammate was telling me good job um, for like an assist or something. And then the girl walked over to her. And then the next time a play happened, she tripped her. Mm. So I, <laughs> I like to target the girls that hurt so my like- teammates and then like, Go like directly. I mean, not directly, but mm-hmm. like you want to pay back. Exactly. So, so like you showed her what's what. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, why do you think that? Is is isn't it so much harder to be mean? It is than it like, is to help somebody to help to elevate yes. and give somebody compliments. Mm-hmm. Why do you think people do that? Because they just want attention and try to be grown. So like they try to be mean to other people, see how they feel, and now they can spread it to other people. Mm. And make the world a really, really I bad know. place. So it spreads, right? So evil right. spreads, or being being mean spreads. But it takes so much energy to be it mean does. and tear people to down. Try to not be people be mean to spread it to other people, and it's hard to be mean. But you want to be nice at the same time. Got you. What you guys? Um, it's it's it, it's annoying. Yeah. Because like. I know our family is a very, very nice people, and people tell us that all the time. So whenever I'm nice to, like, one of my associates, not really friends, but associates, right? Yep. Um, and they're like, I don't even know. It's just, like, they are so rude, and I'm like, why? <laughs> Like, it doesn't even make sense. You can be such a nice person. And I've seen you be one before. Like, when we were littler, I had a friend, and she was so nice to me. But now she's, like, older, trying to act grown, and she's really rude to me. I'm like, why? It just takes so much energy out of you. When you could just be nice and happy, she she decides to be, like, grumpy and rude to everybody. But it's also jealousy could be the thing. Because I know um, whenever the soccer season started, we had tryouts, and then this new girl came on my team. And, you know, I was nice to her, and then she was mad at me because I was probably, I'm faster, I'm stronger. You, like, did better than her? Yes. And then, yeah, she got, she was mad at me ever since. So I was like, I'm just going to keep on being nice to you. And then my mom always tells me that it's jealousy. And it's also that somebody was probably mean to them in the past. So you have to give them grace. No matter how much you want to just, like, say something (laughs) rude, you have to give them grace. Because there's so many instances when I just want to say something, but I'm like, maybe they're just having a bad day. Is there ever a time where... You want to say something back or do something back, but <laughs> your faith and your your belief in God and your relationship with God stops you. Yes. So sometimes when Isaac's grumpy and he doesn't want to play my games. <laughs> Isaac's your brother. <laughs> yes. He gets grumpy a lot. Okay. And there's phases of him like grumpy, sassy, okay. or like mean. Okay, there's different Isaacs. <laughs> uh-huh. And I just want him to play my game, so I force him to, and he still is not oh. doing it. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. Like, <laughs> but I'm asking about faith, right? How has your relationship with God helped you manage some of these situations, Nadia? Um, it's helped me a lot because there since I'm 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 so many people tell me that I'm really nice, I'm such a great friend, that girls are always trying to be mean to me to make me upset or angry or not be nice. And then there's the amount of times this one girl told me she was like Faster? Yeah, she's told me I'm not faster, but then there's also boys. This one boy, since I have type 1 diabetes, he always tells me I have health problems and jokes around about it. So the amount of times I want to say something, I'm just like, I remember that God, like, what would Jesus do right now? And I was like, I'm just going to keep on being nice, <laughs> no matter how much I want to say something. Good. Or if I'm mad at the twins, like, I... Sky and Isaac, my brother, they're twins. And 
the amount of times they annoy me and make me upset. I want to say something so bad, but I just go to my room and like. That's good. That's good. You find an outlet. What I want to know, because a lot of times, you know, men and women are different. Okay. Right. Boys and girls are different. And a lot of times, like a perfect example, you guys know your daddy's not the most emotional person right, in the world okay right. but your mommy is okay right. and a lot of times that's not all across the table for men and women but a lot of times women are more emotional okay right. so there times women are more perceived perceived more as being more sensitive okay right that sometimes gets misconstrued and utilized as an excuse being that everybody has things that have happened to them that were painful okay things that, that hurt you Things that were traumatic to you that you think about, right? As you right. as other situations happen, what is an example of the most hurtful thing that has ever happened to you, and how does it help you? How does that situation help you now, going forward? So, once I six, so like so once Uncle Cam said I'm slow. Okay. <laughs> that made me really angry. I just wanted to say something. Okay. But I knew to be nice as well, so I said something else, and I said he's old. Okay. So <laughs> you, you talk back to him. All right. All right. We're learning a lot today from Sky. Okay. Good. Good. All right, Nadia. Um, give me. I have one that I know that you've experienced, but I don't. It might not be the most the most hurtful, hurtful. thing that's, that's happened to you. Um, I'm thinking probably whenever I got diagnosed with diabetes. Okay. But also, I have two things. Is that okay? Yeah, feel free. So recently, last year, I got... My blood sugar levels were super high, and it was telling me that. But usually, whenever I'm sick, my blood sugar go ha goes high. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to the hospital. Or I had to go to the ER first. Mm -hmm. But then they had to give me an IV, but I was um, dehydrated. Because every time I would try to eat or drink something, I would just barf it up. So I was dehydrated. So they had trouble finding my vein. And then I super, tr I, it was very hard for me to go to sleep because the vein was the, um, what's it called? The IV, IV. was bothering me because I was like trying to lay in it. It was like moving so around. So like you were scared to feel like gold more in your body? Yeah. And then also whenever, I, I like friends a lot. And I like to be nice. I like friends. Mm -hmm. So whenever I try to be friends with some, or whenever I'm nice to somebody and they say that they're my friend and then they talk bad about me or they don't, they're not nice to me, I'm like, yeah. why? <laughs> Got you. How did it make you feel? I think you were in, I want to say you were like in third grade where you had a friend come up and tell you that they couldn't play with you anymore. You remember that? I was in second grade, second yes. Second grade, okay. Can you it tell was us a, about that? It was a, one of my friends from kindergarten. We've been friends ever since kindergarten. And um, at recess, none of my friends were here. I don't know why. But I think they went on vacation or something because yeah. it was right before um, winter break. And I was like, hey, can I play with you? And he said... Um, no. And I said, why not? And he said, because I don't like playing with black people. And I was like, okay. So I started, I went to the bathroom and I started crying because that made me upset. And then, um, cause I've never experienced something like that before. I've always heard of it and stuff like, I've always heard of it. So I, that's never happened to me before. So I didn't know what to do. I was like mad. I wanted to like punch him pretty much I was so upset and mad and it made me sad because I was like why 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 does it matter and then my teacher saw me and then she was she was like she talked to me in the hallway and then I told her all about it and then what's it called he had to go to the principal's office and I I, I don't know why but I still wanted to be friends with him because we've been friends for a long time and he was a cool kid but it just, I had to go to the principal's office. I was scared. I didn't know why. I was like, um, what did I do? And then um, he had to say sorry to me, and I gave him a hug, and we're still friends. But it just, its it was so, like, this. it made me really sad because I've always heard of it happening, like, in the, um, what's it called, Civil Rights Movement and Martin Luther King Jr., 
how they used to like hose people down and then get them with dogs and beat them and talk about them rudely. And then I've never had that happen to me before. I thought I was in second grade, so I wasn't that, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I, th- I was like, oh, that's all over now, but mm, not. Not so much. Yeah. yeah. Does that still bother you today? It does. Like, whenever I think back on it, whenever I'm talking to him, even sometimes when I'm talking to him, it, I'm like, I remember what he did to me. I'm like, I mean, you're a good person, and I still want to be your friend. And not really many people like him because he, like, gets in trouble a lot and stuff. But I'm his friend still, but even still, sometimes I, like, think back on it, and I'm like, why? Like, you don't want to be his friend anymore? Yeah, I feel like I want to say something, but still, like, last, like whenever I was in second grade, I just said, okay. I said, okay, and I got into line, and then I went to the bathroom and started crying so much. And then I remember, um, since I have diabetes, I have to use a thingy, um, my phone tells me if I'm high or low, but I can also t- text and talk to my parents. So I texted, I, th- I think it was either you or mommy, yeah. or I think I texted both of y'all. And then um, Mr. S- my principal, Mr. Sisk, he called y'all about it. And whenever I got home from school, I pretty much, for- I didn't forget about it, but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to make a big scene or anything, but y'all already knew, so I was like, yeah. And I think I cried even whenever we were talking about it after school. Gotcha. Cool. It made me upset. Well, <clears throat> there's always going to be things that, that hurt us, right? What you got, Scott? So once this girl, Jigula, she had only, like, one friend. Okay. But I want to be friends with her, but she was a bully. So I think something happened to her in the past few days, like a long time ago. And maybe that's what made her mad. Or like her parents treat her really badly. Or like say mean things to her. Or I wanted to be her friend. I tried really hardly. And now I'm her friend and she said she'll change. That's good. So you guys are expressing grace. That's what you guys are expressing in those two stories. You guys are giving people love and um, friendship even when they don't deserve it. Yeah, right. right. So God gives us gives us that all the time. Yeah, because yeah, how bad day. how bad we want to say something or do something. Like I remember in that moment I was like, I wanted to say a bad word. I know I, I wasn't supposed to <laughs> 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 I was super mad though. I wanted to like hit him and say bad word. Yeah. But I was like, I have to give him grace. Like I didn't know and I was upset too. So I was like, just why bother? Yeah. All right, well, I want you guys, before we get off, okay? Thank you all for sharing some of those stories, right? Some of those stories were in regards to to Women's History Month. Some of those stories were just in regards to you guys growing up as 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 youth, as young ladies in this in this cold world that we live in. <laughs> um, mistreatment from guys, mistreatment from girls. We should all want to elevate and help each other out. But what would you guys want to say to those young girls or women that are dealing with difficult times and they need the support from other women what would you want to tell them i would say you got this and i believe in you and you got this and god will always be by your side when you need them love it what you got Nadia? i think yeah just stay strong don't let other people bring you down you know like my mom always tells me that whenever somebody says something to you it makes you super mad but again you have to think words um, what's it called? Actions are more than show more than words. So you just have to like shake them off sometimes or ignore them. But just stay strong. And then if anybody says something to you, whatever religion you are, like Christian, um, Muslim, Muslim yep, right? A lot of them, yeah. Yep. And just like think of what your God would do. Yeah. Because I, I know there's amount of times, there's a number of times where I, I just get so upset. I want to do stuff, but then I have to be like, would God really want me to do this? Yep. That's good. That's good so stay process. strong. Good. All right, right before we leave, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a track star okay. and a gymnastic gymnast. Okay. What about you? 
I want to be a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> I want to be a soccer star um, or a teacher okay. because I remember I I had a second grade teacher and she was the best teacher like awesome. ever, Miss Doolittle. She was the best. So I want to I want to be like her. Sweet. Well, ladies, thank y'all for coming on. All right. Thank you. Hopefully some women get to hear this and some girls right. uh, about Women Empowerment and Women's History Month. We're going to continue to I'm going to continue to do my best to make sure that you guys have everything that you need to be the best that you can be. Um, and I, I appreciate y'all. I love you, little minions. Even when your butt stinks. Hey. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey. Y'all listen to another episode of Let Me Tell You Something Myself and My Guy, Big Nate Dog. will be back next week. But until then, we'll see y'all. We gone. Bye.